Good afternoon everybody, this is Jason Fisher. You're watching 15 Minutes in the Forest. Uh, we've been covering a lot of topics on forestry and we've been in the woods, but today we're gonna change gears. Uh, fall is quickly approaching and so is hunting season. And uh, I've got a guest with me today. This is Matt Knox with the Department of Wildlife Resources. Uh, this is uh, the, the Deer Project Coordinator for Virginia. Matt's been working at this role now for some 28 years. And so he's a veteran uh, in his role uh, and has done a lot of work with deer management uh, in the state of Virginia. And today, we're gonna take a minute to look at aging deer jaws. Why is that important? Well, we get a lot of questions every fall from hunters, from landowners, that are just curious about the health of their deer. Or in particular, they've harvested a deer and want to know its age. So we get a lot of questions about that and thought you'd enjoy that. So stick with us. We're going to uh, look at some deer jaws and talk about aging techniques and a couple of other things today. You're watching 15 Minutes in the Forest. Uh, a lot of people ask where we get all these deer jaws because I may have mentioned earlier that every year the department staff ages about 14, 13, 12 to 14,000 deer jaws. Uh, Almost all of these deer jaws come from our deer management assistance program, or what hunters would call DMAP. And DMAP is, uh, we have about 700 clubs statewide and well over a million acres. I can't, 1.3 or 4 million acres, I can't remember the acreage amount. But the, we work with landowners to manage deer on their property uh, to meet their objective, not our objective. It's uh, gold oriented. And uh, again, we have about 700 clubs, but as part of the DMAP program, these hunt clubs and hunters pull a deer jaw from every deer they take on the property. And that's where we get these 12 to 14,000 jaws every year. And we age them for them and provide them a report showing them. And when they take out a deer jaw, they weigh the deer, they collect antler measurements, whether or not it's lactating, and they look for HD. And over the years, we've built a database now that has tens of thousands of data sets in it and over 600,000 deer. So the DMAP program is, is sort of the driving force behind our deer jaws and our biological data that we collect as an agency. Uh, one of the questions people ask is why age a deer jaw? Uh, for several reasons. Of course, one is just the knowledge for the knowledge of the person that found the jaw or, or killed the deer. They want to know how old it is. Uh, hunters are always wanting to know this information. But from a biological perspective, you can also use these jaws to calculate recruitment rates. By looking at the number of fawns per doe in the population, and uh, although fawns can generally be judged by size, I have seen fawns that look big enough to be like adults and adults that look small enough to be fawns. So you have to have the jaw. You can't look at a deer and age a deer. You can estimate its age, but you can't age it. The second thing is if you have a deer jaw, especially the jaws of bucks, uh, you can calculate mortality rates by looking at the difference between the age classes and tell how many of the deer are being removed from the deer population, which is important for uh, population management. For example, in Virginia, looking at biological data, and we get about 14,000 deer jaws a year in the state of Virginia from our DMAP cooperators, we know that the average buck mortality rate is about 40%. So that means in any given deer season, 40% of the deer are removed by hunters, the other 60% of that deer, or bucks, survive. So Matt, a couple of questions we get, you, you mentioned about you know, aging deer jaws and why, why it's important. Um, some people might be wondering, you know, about deer's teeth and, and do they lose their teeth? Uh, you know, how, how would you distinguish a, a really young, say, six-month-old animal or maybe a year-old animal? They're born in what, May to, to June? Late May, early June, Late usually, May, typically. June. And uh, what are we looking at? Where do we start? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, the, the technique that almost everybody in the country uses to age deer jaws is a... Uh, tooth replacement and wear technique. For instance, the jaw I'm holding here is a fawn jaw. And uh, a fawn that is born, typically most fawns in uh, Virginia are born in late May, early June. Come around deer season, they'll be about six months old, uh, give or take. And they'll have four teeth in their jaw. Uh, and sometimes a fifth tooth might be coming in. But so, uh, this four teeth is very diagnostic of a fawn jaw and like I say possibly a fifth tooth coming in. The first three teeth are baby teeth or milk teeth and these teeth right here the first three and in fact this third one is the most critical third tooth these first three are premolars and they'll be shed when the deer is a year and a half old. The next fall right during deer season it's going to shed these teeth. This first molar is retained 
it comes in by six months, the second molar will be in by 12 months, and the third molar will be in by 18 months. So using this tooth replacement method, you can age deer to a year and a half with about 100% accuracy. After that point, after a year and a half, you have to use wear, and it becomes more uh, subjective. And uh, it's pretty good at two and a half, kind of good at three and a half, but as deer get older, you're estimating the age. You're not aging a deer jaw anymore. Okay, the fallen jaw is fairly simple. There's four teeth. One, two, three, four. The first three teeth are premolars, or baby teeth, or milk teeth, and these teeth will be uh, lost in a year and a half. This first tooth is a molar that came in at about six months of age. You can see the second molar begin to come in, and then there'll be a third molar. This third tooth is very diagnostic on deer jaws because when it's a fawn, it's a baby tooth, and you see it has one, two, three parts. By the time you go to a year and a half, a deer now has six teeth. One, two, three, four, five, six. Premolar one, premolar two, premolar three, molar one, molar two, molar three. Now this is all the teeth it will have as an adult, but I want you to notice it still has this baby tooth with three parts. One, two, three, and now it's really worn because it's about to be lost. At a year and a half of age, this tooth is gonna come out. This deer's a year and a half. In fact, if you look underneath, you can see the tooth coming in underneath this one. So at 18 months of age, they lose these three baby teeth and get their permanent premolars. So this is a year and a half old deer with the tooth coming in underneath. Uh, what happens next is this. This is a year and a half old jaw. One, two, three, four, five, six teeth. So it's got all its teeth. But I want you to notice the color of these teeth. They are brand new and razor sharp. And this third tooth, which is one of the most diagnostic tooth in a deer jaw, no longer has three parts, it has two parts. That's the adult premolar. So this deer with all these teeth that just came in, one, two, three, four, five, six, is a yearling deer. This deer jaw with one, two, three, four, five, six, and the baby premolar is also a yearling jaw. So this happens in a year and a half. They lose these baby teeth, and get this adult, these adult teeth. They go from three parts. Well, they had the fallen jaw had three parts. This yearling doll, jaw has three parts. This yearling jaw has the adult tooth. All right, Matt. So we've looked at a fawn. We've looked at a year and a half. We're going to keep going into the the teenage years of the deer, so to speak. What are we looking at now? This is a year and a half old jaw, and again, it has one, two, three, four, five, six teeth with the three-part baby teeth for the third premolar. The unique thing about year and a half old deer is this is the year that the antlered buck will grow his first set of antlers. So deer hunters tend to see a lot of these and, and they tend to kill quite a few, but that's a year and a half old deer. What happens when they're a year and a half old, as I mentioned before, this tooth comes in underneath, and when it comes in underneath, it comes in from a three-part tooth to a two-part tooth. So this is still a year and a half old deer, but you can see now it has one, two, three premolars, one, two, three molars for six teeth, and they're all just razor sharp. Uh, that's still a year and a half old deer. What's gonna happen from this point on, tooth, we've used tooth replacement to get to a year and a half. From here on out, you're gonna look at wear because as the deer get older, these little sharp crests you see on the teeth wear down. As they wear down, there's little black lines that you can barely see in here that are called dentine lines, which will get wider. So this is a year and a half old deer. This is a two and a half year old deer. Now again, these beforehand I was aging deer, I'm estimating the age of this one, but you can see all the one, two, three, four, five, six teeth in, the two part adult tooth, and it's worn here. So it's been in a while. And all these teeth are sharp. This is two and a half. This is an adult jaw with all the adult teeth, that two part tooth, and all the crests are sharp. But it's been in, this tooth has been in for a while and you can see the wear, so that's a two and a half year old deer. I'll go to a four and a half year old deer. Now you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, all the teeth are in, and now you can see these black lines getting wider as the teeth are wearing down. Again, we would say, tell you this deer is four and a half, which means it's at least four and a half. It could be older. Now we're estimating ages. When you get to six and a half, now the teeth are really worn. In fact, not only are they really worn, you can see this tooth right here, the first 
one, two, three molars. The first molar is about worn smooth. We would estimate this deer at six and a half. This deer, you can't even age it. First tooth, second tooth, third tooth, premolars, first molar, second molar, third molar, all the molars are worn smooth. Our staff would call this deer eight and a half, but it could easily be a teenager. Uh, 12, 13, 14 would not be unheard of. In that case, it'd almost always be a doe. Bucks don't survive in Virginia past, much past five to seven, very rare, but does do live to older age classes. One of the questions we get about aging deer is how you can age a deer. And of course, one of the ways we've already talked about it is the replacement and wear technique that we've shown a little bit about. The second technique is you can pull this central incisor and send it out to Matson's lab out west and they can count the rings in that teeth. A lot of people ask if I'm walking through the woods and find a deer skull, can I age it? And of course, in this case, this is a doe, uh, an adult doe. And you can turn it over and uh, can you age it? Not like any technique I know here. Now you can look at this teeth and as bad as they're worn, this is a very, very, very old deer. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say eight and a half to a teenager. But there's no technique that's been described for aging deer by their top teeth. The one thing I will tell you is they have six teeth in the top just like they do in the bottom. And of course there's no front teeth on a deer. But they do change these premolars at 18 months of age. So if you find one that's changing the premolars, you're looking at a year and a half old skull. But otherwise there's no technique for aging a deer skull. Uh, can you age a deer jaw uh, by rings and mention, mention bears too, maybe how that's uh, done as, a, as an analogy being that same tooth? Yeah, actually you can. Uh, there's a technique where they take this central incisor right here on the lower jaw, this big flat tooth, and you can send it off to a lab out west. It's called Matson's Lab, M-A-T-S-O-N. You can go to their website. And for a cost, a hunter, and I'm gonna say the cost is 25 to $50, they will take this tooth and section it and count the rings. So there is another technique. This We use wear and attrition because we're doing 14,000 deer a year and we can't afford to send them all to Matson's lab. The Matson's lab can take this tooth, tooth and count rings. And I'll give you a good example. All the bears that are killed in Virginia, we collect a tooth from every bear. So last year, I forget the bear kill, but I, there's over 3,000 bear teeth were sent to Matson's lab and we get back ages. Uh, I have a friend that killed one in Pennsylvania County, I asked him the other day, it was 11 or 12 years old. So they count rings. They use a different tooth, but if you go to the, the website, you can see a video on how to pull this tooth, how to submit it to their lab. Let's set up close to the screen there, Matt, as close as you can get. We're looking at the incisor, which you know. The central incisor. Yep. Uh, right down the bottom and the front. Now, do they have incisors in the top of their mouth? Uh, no. Uh, Horse, horses do, but ruminants do not. Deer do not have teeth on the top, uh, behind their top lip, uh, just bottom teeth. Uh, believe it or not, there's incisors here and then there's a canine. Sometimes a deer will have a vestigial canine on their top jaw. Very rare, but I've seen two or three of them. But uh, incisors, canine, premolars, molars. A pretty typical uh, mammalian dentition pattern. Why is why is that, Matt? When you said uh, bucks don't live to be as old as they as duck, because they grow antlers. Because they grow antlers, okay, <laughs> and, and that turns into to them wanting to do what? It turns into hunters wanting to kill them. Yes. So being seen by hunters and yeah. and also, what about the uh, the rut? What does that do to them? Well, the the rut gets them killed because they they lose their sense of uh. uh What's the sense, what's the word I'm looking for? Their caution, the sense of caution. It's the breeding season and the drive to, to breed and reproduce outweighs their, their innate caution. So bucks get killed during the rut because uh, they're looking for does. Outside of that rut, old bucks are almost immortal or invincible because they're just, they just don't walk in, you don't get to be an old buck by walking in front of deer hunters. So uh, the age of bucks is, is very highly related to hunting pressure. Now in places where people pass up young small bucks, you'll find more older bucks. But where people don't do that, very few bucks survive to three and a half and virtually none survive to five and a half. Tune in next week for 15 Minutes in the Forest, fall edition of Forest Pests with colleague Neil Clark.